Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's midweek message. It's lovely to see you all. I'm Nancy Gillard. I'm the pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Clinton, Missouri. And I know that we have some regulars that watch these, so it's good to see you again. If you're one of our congregational members and you're not able to make it to church just yet, you've decided that you want to stay in, we sure want you to know that we're thinking of you and praying for you. If you have any needs, any prayer concerns, please let your elder know. So there is an elder tree with the elders calling what we call the leaves of the tree. And I hope that you got your carol on either Friday or Saturday of last week or yesterday, I'm sorry, or Monday. When you open up that carol on to read through all the different articles for the church, you'll also see listed in there the elder calling tree. So if you need anything, if you have any ideas, concerns, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to call your elder. If you'd like to talk to me, you're welcome to call me, or you're welcome to call the church at any time. Just a reminder to those of you that are watching this, the drive-in church service, which we have found to be remarkably successful, and we really enjoy it, drive-in church service, this Sunday will start at 9.30. We're trying to beat the heat. Some of you that are already making plans for 4th of July know that it is going to be really hot on 4th of July. So we're going to start at 9.30, try and get a little bit of the cool that's left from the evening, and enjoy our drive-in worship service at 9.30. I know that some of you are following these um, particular midweek messages because I've been sharing about my preparation for the Sunday service. If you're doing that and you want to know a little bit about my preparation, I'll let you know that this week the sermon scripture is um, Matthew 11, 25 through 30. So you can check that out. I would encourage you to read all the way back to Matthew 10. Matthew 10 is where Jesus sends out his disciples and he starts to tell them that they can break away from the master, from Jesus. And they can begin to go to different towns. They can share the good news. They can heal. They can um, preach. They can even raise people from the dead. We had a sermon about this a couple weeks ago. So start back at 10. Read through everything that the disciples have been doing in Jesus' name, but not necessarily with Jesus. It gives you an understanding of how active the disciples have been. So now Jesus brings the disciples back together. He congratulates them on a good time of their work. He continues to encourage them. And at the beginning of Matthew 11, Jesus then lifts up John, the one that we call the Baptist, and explains to his disciples and to John's disciples how important John's ministry is and even calls John the greatest prophet. He is the prophet. So um, that's interesting to read through. Go ahead and do that. But as you understand, Matthew 10 and come into Matthew 11, you'll get a sense of why Jesus uses the words, come to me all you who labor and are heavily burdened and I will give you rest. And that, those verses make sense as Jesus is talking to his disciples. They've been out doing the work of the gospel, and I'm sure that they're exhausted. He is talking to the disciples of John. John has been arrested, and they are working on his behalf, as well as feeling the stress of what it means to be a disciple of one who has been arrested. With all of this work, with all of this fear, with all of this stress that is going out through the believers of Jesus Christ, it is welcome, a welcome word that Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Now that you hear what's happening in chapter 10 and chapter 11, it does help us to understand why Jesus is offering these words of comfort. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle 
and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is an extraordinary piece of gentleness where Jesus offers some words to his disciples to help them to know that they can come to Jesus, not just to learn what it means to do the work of a disciple, but also what it means to find comfort and release and repair, both in their spirit and in their soul as they serve Jesus Christ. So please do your Bible study work before you hear this sermon, which I will put out um, on Sunday after church. You'll be able to have a feeling of what we'll be doing for that church service. And also, it'll give you a little head up, a little um, background to the words of Jesus. I'm sure that most of you have heard these words before in Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. I'm sure that many of you have heard those verses before, but now... Um, who is it that used to say, now you know the rest of the story? So be sure to study those, those scriptures that come before our passage as well as after our passage. They'll help you to have sense for who Jesus is and truly what Jesus was calling his disciples to do. So that's a little bit of look into the sermon that's coming up. The other thing that I want to share with you is from Presbyterians Today. This is a wonderful magazine that our denomination puts out monthly. You can see that this month, the title is Crisis and Creativity. Wonderful articles in here, but I do want to share something that they have here in the Presbyterians Today magazine about how one church is handling their congregation and being in the COVID season. Let me read you a little bit about this church. This is a church from... Oh, I'll have Trinity Presbyterian. The author, Dana Frischneck Jackson, I do not know this woman, she writes this. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Presbyterians researched their church's histories in hope of discovering how congregations responded to the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. She goes on to say that many of the churches were surprised that they couldn't find any mention in their church history whatsoever about how that pandemic influenced their congregation and their members. So one congregation in Valdosta, Georgia, decided that this is not something that they were going to allow to happen now that this COVID-19 pandemic was making history in their congregation. So the Valdosta, it may be Valdosta, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, forgive me. Valdosta, Georgia congregation has created a photo book called Porch Pictures. And I hope that you all will do this. Porch Pictures feature photos of members sitting on the front porch of their home. And they turn this into a book. We may just put this on Facebook. But what it does is it captures a unique time of being when faith came to a family in a new way and new in a, its redesign. Let me just show you one of these pictures. I don't have a lot, but I've got one. And here's what it looks like. Here's this family. They are sitting on the porch of their home and they have put this particular picture in the church scrapbook. So that they will always remember this particular time in history. I think that's a wonderful idea. I really hope some of you will take a picture of yourselves on your porch at your house. And then you can send it to us. You can put it in as a picture if you want to. But really, if you just want to click and then email it to us, we'll be sure to put those on our Facebook page. I think that that will be a lot of fun. As soon as I leave the office today, I'm going to go home and Grant and I are going to take a picture out on the porch at our house. So please go ahead and do these porch pictures to document this time in history. Let me also share one more thing with you from Presbyterian Today magazine. This is a graph. I'm going to try and hold it up so that you can see it and I'm going to hold it up long enough so that you might even be able to read it. This graph is entitled 
what will it take? What is it? What will it take? What will it take to feel safe? And I'm hoping that you can read that. I'll let you have a little bit of time to look at it, and then I'll read through it as well. What will it take to feel safe? This is a statistical page. The statistics were brought together by the Presbyterian Church. And particularly what it is looking at is members of the church and what they say about their desire and their feelings of when they will feel comfortable coming back to the sanctuary. So hopefully you've been able to read that a little bit. You can even put this on pause and enlarge it, and then you can read a little bit better. So let me try and read this as well, so that you can get a feeling, because I think this is pretty representative of some of the things that our session at First President Clinton has been talking about as well. So let me read these to you. And once again, you can put that on pause and then enlarge it so that you can see those, those um, uh, statistics a little bit better. So it's a PCUSA snapshot. As churches take steps to resume in-person worship services, a poll of thousands of church leaders asked people what activity best signals that they would feel safe to gather again in public. We'll start with the small one. The smallest one is 4%, and 4% says that they will feel safe coming back when schools are open. That's just 4%. 3% is smaller, I'm sorry. 3% say that they will come back and worship publicly when vaccines are available. 3, 4. The next one is 6. 6% 6 says that they will come back. They'll feel safe gathering together when testing is widely available and utilized. 8%. They use as their guide, local restaurant seating areas are open. Here is 11% is not sure. 14% say local businesses are open. 15% say only when all conditions are met. All conditions mean low cases, businesses open, Restrictions lifted, vaccines available. That is 15%. The next one is 17%. 70% is social distancing and stay home guidelines are lifted, are completely lifted. Social distancing and stay home guidelines are lifted. And then 22%. Low level of COVID-19 cases in the community. That's when they'll come back. Here's one more statistic that says 30% of, of all respondents say they'd rather worship at home and only return when they can be mask free in church. I think that that's very interesting. I hope that you had a chance to take a look at that. Like I said, you can put your, um, your picture on pause and then you can enlarge this so that you can read it better. But I do believe that what we're reading here, what you see here from the Presbyterian Today magazine for this month, does reflect a lot of the conversations that our session has had. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. I like statistics, and I hope that you'll appreciate what the Presbyterian Church is doing as well. If you have any questions, if there's anything I can do to you, please know that you're in my heart and in my prayers. And let's go ahead and close with prayer. Almighty God, we do thank you for this time. Certainly, Lord, we want to be good stewards of all that you have given us, including our friends and our family here at First Presbyterian Church. Lord, for all those that are working on the front lines of this illness, we'd ask that you would give them peace and comfort. Lord, for all those who have been affected by this illness and certainly the sadness of death and true illness as well as illness that people have gotten well from, 
We ask, Lord, that you would help them to heal both in their body as well as in their spirit. And Lord, just because I've been in hospitals before, I pray for all those nameless, faceless people that no one ever knows about. We regularly pray for doctors and nurses, those that are in research development. But there are a lot of people, Lord, that are in administration, a lot of people that are in um, dietetics, people that are cooking food, people that are passing trays. That is a thankless God, and so many people do that. Lord, there are lots of people that are scrubbing floors and scrubbing do doorknobs. Be with them, Lord. Lord, there are nurses that do nothing but just enter data. Be with them, Lord. And Lord, I would particularly ask that you would be with all those that are involved in reading test data. Those people, it takes so many people to take the tests, but they're not the ones that read the information. Lord, help those people as well. Be with those silent behind the scenes servants, Lord. We reach out to them and we thank you for their good work. I pray these sins in your son's name, who taught us to pray saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive us our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again.